How's it going everybody? A uh, little bit of a different setup here today. I'm trying to move my shop around so that I can look at the camera a little bit better and maybe not block you guys. We'll try this for a little while. This is just a makeshift bench. This is actually an old uh, uh, table with, it's got steel wheels on it and that. This is like 150 years old. It's been smashed and broken for years so I just put this little top on it. Anyhow, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, it's early in the morning again. I've been shooting uh, from sun up just before noon and uh, we're getting done what we can get done. Um, it is much, much too dry to run power saws right now. I've pulled the pin on that operation. So uh, for the foreseeable future, we're going to be at the bench working on power saws. Okay. I'm going to bring you guys in close here. I want to show you guys the Echo CS590, um, the muffler for this thing. It is, it's very, very plugged up. Uh, a lot of you guys said the muffler is what you think is holding the saw back. I think you're correct. Now the coil and the carburetor were also holding the saw back. Remember, I leaned the saw out as far as I could get it and it was 12.4, 12.5. That's all I could get out of the saw. Um, the whole series of this is what if you already have one of these and you want to bump up the performance a little bit. So, uh, the carb in the coil did give it a little bump in performance. Now, once this thing's ported, I wouldn't port this saw without that carbon coil. So the reason we put those parts on here is that I'm going to be porting the saw. Um, it's up to you whether you want to spend the dough, uh, to upgrade it. It definitely is a better saw with this, with the 620 carbon coil. So... Let's take a look at this muffler. Um, I'm going to show you guys the inside of it as best as I can and kind of show you guys what the deal is here. And then I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to mod it. Okay, we'll try this like this. So here's the muffler for the CS590. It is very, very restricted. So basically, from what I gather, from what I can see in here, the exhaust flows into the inlet of the exhaust or the muffler there's a divider right here okay on the other side of that divider is this pipe that goes right to the bottom front here there's a couple of little holes in that divider so this thing's breathing through a straw right now okay now this is going to be a saw used for tree work so it'd be nice uh, if Caleb can use a a spark arrestor on this saw so now he's already modified this, uh, the spark arrestor goes underneath and it goes like this. So what I'm thinking is, and I don't know how well this is going to work, because a lot of you guys said you don't weld but you'd still like to do muffler mods. Well, you could fish gill it here and here, okay, as long as, as long as, and again, I just want to check the camera here folks. This is a new filming experience for me. As long as it's not going to blow on here, okay, you could fish gill it on this side right here. That's the deal with that. Okay, right here. You could fish gill it there. But that divider is still on this side, okay? It blocks the front from the back. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hog this out right here. So that the, the air will go in and out. That's what I'm going to try. Um, if it doesn't work, we can always weld it back up. Basically, if you really wanted to make this thing flow, you'd have to heat the seam up, unsolder it, because it looks like this is braced together. Pull the front off. Cut all this junk out of here, the center. Okay. And then, uh, and then weld it back together. Uh, if you're so inclined, please do that. Um, I'm trying to keep this simple, yet effective, okay? So, what we want to do here, pretty simple, and I'm sure this is going to work just fine. We want to get the heat out of this saw, and we want to do it in a way that we're not going to burn our legs, etc. I'm going to drill a little hole in here. Okay, there's our hole. Now we're gonna hog this out with our Fordham that uh, Mr. Tony Alto sent us. 
but let's uh, let's save ourselves some work and drill some holes in here. Okay, get this one. Okay, there we go. Now we can get a burr in there and we will hog this out. Uh, rule of thumb on muffler mods, most people say 60 to 70% of the total outlet of the muffler. I'm of, an, I'm of an agreement. Now, I'm just gonna grab a couple of birds here. My thing is guys, a lot of the mods you guys see me doing on this channel, um, a lot of those saws are ported pretty warm. They really want to breathe. So uh, start smaller and work your way bigger. If you don't, you can go way too far and then you end up, uh, the saw can run a little bit lean. Okay, we'll just grab any old rotary burr right here. This is nice. I'm actually going to be sitting running this thing. Let me know if you like this view. Um, this is just, I just rigged this up today. It's nice and cold in this corner and uh, I kind of, I kind of like that. Look, it goes right through now. Now I'm going to just going to take this and hog it out. You guys see that? There's our muffler mod. Now, if I feel like I need more, I will take, there we go. I will take my Dremel and I will actually grind a slot down that center, that center tube, okay? And we will relieve more pressure. We'll see what this is gonna do. I'm gonna bolt this on the power saw. Okay, here's our muffler mod right here. Just ground a hole in there. Uh, I scuffed up the top a little bit. I'll just give her a little painty paint when we're done. Okay, let's put the deflector back on. Again, I don't know what this is going to do. We're just horsing around in the power saw shop, aren't we? That's what we do here. Okay, I'll put this back on. Again, when you pour the saw, you gotta make sure it breathes before. Okay, before you pour the saw, make sure that that muffler's opened up because ported saws generally make more heat. So that's something that that's something that you need to be aware of. Now I'm not sure which way this goes. I reckon it goes this way. There you go. Little heat shield. Drop a couple of these bolts in there. 
you guys think this is going to beat up on the Mighty 562 when we poured it? What do you guys think? Uh, I think I think ported, uh, this thing's going to be strong. When you start with a saw that's torquey, in my opinion, you don't need to add more torque to it, to it. You add RPM. When you add RPM, you still have a lot of torque. That makes for a good work saw. Again, in my opinion, everybody ports different, and I'm good with that. Um, I'm just having fun in my shop, and I do what I do. Every saw is a little different, and uh, that's what makes this fun. You never know what a saw is going to do until you port it. Now, if you've done the same saw a hundred times, sure. But once in a while, you'll get one that's extra good. It happens. Uh, this muffler is almost like a steel. There we go. I like the way they have torques on these saws. They definitely, uh, that's definitely a good fastener for power saws, I find. They grab well, they don't strip out. Okay, now the other one down here somewhere. I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm going to leave this off for now because we're just testing. Okay. difference this thing is way snappier now whether it cuts faster I don't know the only way to find out is to bar it up so I'm gonna throw a bar and chain on this let's take her outside and let's see what the dealio is I'll tell you right now this thing feels like a different saw okay I have tuned the saw leaned it out as much as it'll go and uh, let's see what we got <laughs> Okay, friends, this thing feels like a way stronger saw now, believe it or not. I don't know if it's faster, but it pulls harder. Uh, I strapped what we got left. Uh, this is this is uh, cottonwood. It's dry. It's hard as a rock. Let's see what this thing can do in something a little bit bigger. <laughs>
what a difference. What a difference, friends. <laughs> Ink my chain sharp. <laughs> I wanted to get as many cuts out of that as I can because, like I said, I don't really want to go in the bush cutting. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good sharp chain. Equally sharpened on both sides. We'll have to look at the times. I'll uh, review it, but this thing feels like a way, way stronger power saw with that muffler mod. My high jet is at about half to five eighths of a turn. Um, these carbs definitely are on the rich side. Not the worst thing. Uh, you'll never blow one of these up, I bet you, but I'm happy, friends. Um, I'm gonna go inside and look at the results and we can compare it to a stock saw and, and go from there. Definitely happy. I'm gonna say, friends, I sure like these pants. Uh, it's the first time I've worn them cutting. They are nice. Okay, I reviewed the footage and I knew I felt more grunt. Okay, sometimes you feel grunt, but it doesn't trans. It doesn't mean speed. Okay, this thing felt stronger and faster. Uh, I went over and tabulated my results now. Right now, as this thing stands, uh, we picked up about three quarters of a second to a second on average in the cuts. I, I reviewed all the cuts. I used a stopwatch and got all the cut times. I'll give you guys a little blurb at the end of this uh, video and you can watch a stock cut uh, or you can watch a cut with the carb and the, and the coil and then one with the carb coil and the muffler. Now, what I'm seeing Comparing 562 to 590 this thing with these parts on it. It cuts as fast as a 562 uh, Believe it or not um, This thing's averaging about three and a half to 3.7 seconds in the cut That's exactly where the 562 was cutting on the same log with the same chain. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. I didn't know what it was gonna do. So I figured let's try um, I don't know if that's the best way to do a muffler mod, but uh it seems to be working. This thing likes a really lean high jet. Uh, about half a turn, five eighths of a turn is where this is sitting at for me. Um, it is super, super hot out though. So um, be mindful of how lean your saw is when it's hot out. You don't want it to pop from heat. So there you go, friends. Next time you see this saw, we're going to take the top end off. We're going to do a gasket delete. Uh, we're going to put a timing wheel on it. I want to see where this thing times with no base gasket. It does, this saw is 100% stock. So um, we'll make a plan of what we're going to do. Um, already, I know I'm probably going to do zero intake work. I'm going to roughen the intake up. Remember, rough is good on an intake. Um, I've seen it on a dyno, uh, a rough intake keeps the fuel in suspension and often that means more power. Uh, I've never dynoed one of my saws, but I have dynoed Harley Davidson, sport bikes, stuff like that. Um, you don't want the fuel to puddle. You want to keep it in suspension. Um, I move air for a living. Sometimes we have to move air that has moisture in it. Um, those, uh, when we use ductwork, it's insulated ductwork that has a spiral in it and that keeps the air in uh, air and, and uh, moisture in suspension. So um, I look at the work I do every day in air movement and I use it in my saws here. So um, I'm pretty excited. This thing runs pretty good now. You can hear it, it still breaks up a little bit under load. You, you gotta put this thing in some pretty big wood now for it to really uh, start to bite. Stock, I was cutting small wood with this thing stock because I found it just, it didn't have the oomph um, to really cut and anything bigger than, you know, so 
and that's just my wood and and uh you know what i'm experiencing you guys that have these saws you may experience something different i think this saw is broken in it's got a lot of compression now so um i think we're good anyhow what we're going to do with this saw i'm probably going to raise the exhaust groove 8 to 10 degrees which is pretty high i think the rev limiter on this coil will handle that um this thing, the rev limiter is about 13 and a half on this saw now. There's no way this thing will cut at 13 and a half. Uh, the exhaust roof is at 114. I think I'm going to put it at 104. Um, I feel like we have enough compression to warrant that. I may go 102. I'm going to leave the upper transfer stock. We're going to hog out the lowers and we're going to rough up the intake. That's it. And you guys will see. We may do a timing advance on this saw. I think the timing is a little lazy on this saw. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Anyhow, friends, uh, here's some clips of the saw running with the coil and just the carb, no muffler mod, and then a clip of it running with the muffler mod today. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy, and I'll see you guys in a few days. Later.